गुड मॉर्निंग वेन गुड मॉर्निंग मैम एवरीवन सो इन कंटिन्यूशन विद लेक्चर सीरीज नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर एंड आई एम प्राउड दैट टुडे दिस लेक्चर विल बी टेकन बाय टीम एसएमएस मेडिकल कॉलेज सवाई मान सिंह मेडिकल कॉलेज जयपुर गुड मॉर्निंग सुषमा मैम गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग आई हैवंट हर्ड सो आई जस्ट थॉट दैट आई आस्क अ शेफ गुड 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 सो फर्स्ट आई वांट टू इंट्रोड्यूस दिस टीम वी कांट हियर यू can you hear me hello yes ma'am yes ma'am we can hear you so okay so first i want to introduce this team that uh, uh, this is a team from savai mansing medical college jaipur and the moderator is dr ashwin mathur uh, dr ashwin i know since uh, the day uh, whatever the plan and thought must have come in her mind she was working very hard to start palliative medicine and uh, she is basically uh, background is medicine background and she was so working so hard to start uh, um, first palliative care services there for a uh, few years she worked uh, to start palliative care services once the foundation was strong they worked hard to start md palliative medicine and i am so proud that today uh, their second year students so already they one year has passed the past and uh, now this uh, kashav has become second year student and uh, they are presenting a very important topic spinal malignant spinal cord compression and uh, uh, we everyone is eagerly waiting to hear kashav raj uh, how is he uh, how <laughs> how much he has learned palliative medicine and everything ashwin and on personal note ashwin is very warm uh, very polite and uh, very enthusiastic whatever new things is happening she wants to learn and she wants to adopt in her practice so thank you ashwin can you introduce kesav raj because we don't know kesav raj we just know the name that uh, is second year student but you can introduce him so you know as you he is working with you yes ma'am thank, thank you for such kind words ma'am and it has been possible only because of your guidance and the constant support we have been able to get from you so thank you very much Uh, dr keshav uh, is a, is will always be a very dear student to me because he is our he was our first uh, md candidate uh, uh, he is from down south he is from trichy and he's been here so he has been able to adjust to the cultural shift to quite some level now a very hard working student a very obedient student and very academically oriented so keshav will today be presenting uh, um uh malignant spinal cord compression uh and uh, probably this is his first time so you can hear a bit of nervousness in his voice but i think two or three slides on later uh, he'll go uh, full fledgedly into it so keshav can you start our presentation yes ma'am yes begin please good morning everyone today uh, my presentation is about malignant spinal cord compression the outline of the talk will be a clinical case the anatomy of the spinal cord definition of malignant spinal cord compression incidence symptoms and signs investigation treatment and outcomes let's see a clinical case a 56 year old man with history of hypertension and osteoarthritis presents to the general practitioner with history of a back pain unresponsive to step on analgesics the pain beginning to wake him at night more pain with lying down and shooting down the right leg please keep this history in mind and we will see the anatomy and pathophysiology and come to the case then. this is the anatomy of the spine we can see uh, the vertebral body here spinous process the spinal cord and the nerve roots coming from the spinal cord Uh, the spinal cord is supplied by uh, two uh, posterior spinal artery and one anterior spinal artery, and its venous drainage is via anterior uh, internal venous uh, plexus, and it drains into the inter uh, intervertebral vein. Anatomy of the spinal cord: the spinal cord ends at the level of L1, L2. The dural sac ends at L2. 
uh, conus medullaris, which is the uh, most distal bulbous part, and the final te phylum terminal, which is the tapering part. You can see here, which is the tapering part of conus medullaris, which is mostly a fibrous tissue, and cada equina, which are distal collection of nerve roots. In this slide, we can see the spinal segment and the corresponding vertebra. In the upper cervical level, uh, the, uh, the spinal segment and vertebra level will be at the same level. In the lower cervical level, the spinal segment and the vertebra level, uh, the own vertebra will be above the spinal segment. And in the upper thoracic uh, level, it is uh, two segment above. And in the lower thoracic level, it is three segment above. And in the lumbar, it is three to five segment above. And in the sacral and coccygeal region, it will be six to 10 segments above. Now we come to the definition of malignant spinal cord compression. Malignant spinal cord compression is compression of the spinal cord by direct pressure and or induction of vertebral collapse or instability by metastatic spread or direct extension of malignancy that threatens or causes neurological disability. There are four mechanisms which includes growth and expansion of vertebral bone metastasis into epidural space. Destruction of vertebral bone by causing vertebral body collapse with displacement of bone fragment into epidural space, paraspinal mass with neural foramina extension, primary hematogenous shearing of malignant cells into epidural space. Initially, uh, it, extension, uh, it causes extension into the epidural space and encircles the thecal sac. Then, epidural venous plexus become obstructed, which leads to intramedullary edema of white matter and gray matter which increases vascular permeability and pressure on small arterioles. Capillary blood flow then diminishes due to disease progression. Then white matter ischemia occurs. Ultimately, there will be infarction and permanent cord damage. Uh, while suspecting upper uh, malignant spinal cord uh, compression, we have to differentiate whether it is upper motor neuron lesion or lower motor neuron lesion. In upper motor neuron, the lesion will be seen above the anterior horn cell in the spinal cord. In lower motor neuron lesion, the lesion is seen in anterior horn cell and motor nerve fiber. The tone will be increased in upper motor neuron lesion and tone will be decreased or reduced in lower motor neuron lesion. Deep tendon reflexes are increased in upper motor neuron lesion or, and reduced or absent in lower motor neuron lesion. Muscle weakness in upper motor lesion includes all group of lower limb muscle more, more marked in the flexor muscle in the upper limb weakness is more marked in the extensor group of muscles in lower motor neuron lesion the muscle weakness will be more seen in the distal muscles than the proximal muscles both flexors and extensors are affected in lower motor neuron type of lesion the malignant spinal cord compression can be divided into intradural and extradural intradural is in turn divided into intramedullary and extramedullary we will see the differentiation between the intramedullary and extramedullary. Uh, intra, in, uh, intramedullary uh, lesion will be seen in, around here, and the extramedullary lesion will be seen here. <clears throat> there will be in intramedullary lesion, there is poorly localized burning pain. In extramedullary lesion, there will be prominent radicular pain. There will be sacral sparing in intramedullary lesion because the lesion, uh, because the arrangement of uh, cervical thoracic lumbar sacral segment is towards this side. So the involvement of uh, there will be sacral sparing in intramedullary lesion. If the lesion is here, there will be yearly sacral loss. In extramedullary lesion, the lesion will be here and yearly sacral loss will be seen in extramedullary lesion. Uh, Corticosinal tract sign appear later in intramedullary lesion. Yearly spastic weakness of legs is seen in extramedullary lesion. In intramedullary lesion, usually there will be a rapid progression. In the extramedullary lesion, there will be a slow progression. Common intradural tumors uh, include intradural intramedullary tumors like astrocytoma, ependymoma, and hemangioblastoma. These are the uh, these are the location of intramedullary intradural tumor. And extramedullary and extra, uh, inter, uh, extramedullary intradural tumors like meningioma, nerve cyst tumors like schwannoma, neurofibroma, and leptomeningeal metastasis and medulloblastoma can be seen in uh, intra, intradural extramedullary area. The extradural tumors include 
metastasis bony tumors and nerve cyst tumor in this diagram we can clearly differentiate how the uh, different type of uh, tumors present with id ims intra uh, intradural intramedullary id em is intradural extramedullary and ed is extradural location of malignant spinal cord compression uh, thoracic spine most thoracic spine is the most common region where malignant spinal cord compression occurs it is seen in 60% of the cases then lumbosacral spine has 30% and cervical spine has 10% The most common cancers which uh, lead to malignant spinal cord compression are breast, lung, prostate, lymphoma, and myeloma. Symptoms uh, which include pain, weakness, sensory loss, and ataxia. Pain is seen in ninety-five percent of the cases. First, like plaque sign is pain. Uh, the, usually, the first symptom, eighty to ninety percent of the time, uh, it is seen. Usually, precedes other neurological symptoms by six to eight weeks. Pain is worse at night. Severe local back pain will be seen. The pain will be aggravated by lying down. The back pain may feel like a band around the chest or abdomen. It will may be mild to begin with, last for more than one to two weeks, can radiate over the involved nerve roots. The second red flag sign is motor system involvement. Weakness will be seen in sixty-one to ninety-one percent of the cases. Commonly, it tends to be symmetrical. You are not audible. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Uh, no, no, we can hear. We can hear, Ashwin. We can hear very well. The second red flag sign is motor no, motor involvement. Uh, weakness can be seen in sixty one to ninety one percent of the cases. Commonly tends to be symmetrical. Severe uh, severity greatest with thoracic metastasis. Affects extensors of upper limb and affects lower uh, flexors of the lower limb. Patient may be hyperreflexic below the lesion and have extensor plantar. Third red flag sign is involvement of sensory system. Uh, it is a uh, uh, less common than motor finding. It is seen in forty-six to ninety percent of the cases. Ascending numbness and paresthesia will be seen. Numbness and pins and needle sensation of involved region will be seen. Feeling unsteady on the feet may also be present. The fourth red flag sign is bladder and bowel involvement. Loss, uh, bladder and bowel function loss uh, is a late finding. Problem uh, in passing urine may include difficulty in controlling bladder function and passing very little urine or passing none at all. And constipation or problem with controlling bowel can also be seen. Now come to our, our patient. Uh, our general examination in our patient is the patient is conscious oriented, AFib prime. The general condition is fair. No pallor, ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy. CVS S1 S2 heard no added sounds and the respiratory system uh, bilateral air entry present normal vesicular breath sound heard in all regions. For abdominal examination, soft non tender bowel sounds are present. On a CNS examination, no abnormality detected. BP and pulse are within normal limits. On back examination, uh, inspection uh, in on inspection normal normal findings are seen. On palpation, mild tenderness tenderness is seen in L1 region. Range of movement is normal. On straight leg rising test, uh, the pa uh, patient complains of pain at sixty degree. This is a positive finding. The lumbar uh, X-ray, lumbar spine X-ray uh, uh, is seen, uh, which can we, in which uh, we can uh, see age-related degeneration. The patient went to a general practitioner where he was given step two analgesics. After four weeks, the pain did not resolve. Uh, pain control inadequate with even with step two analgesics and non pharmacological methods. Patient wakes up and finds difficulty in supporting his weight. Bilateral leg muscle weakness is seen, so the patient comes to OPD. On examination in the OPD, bilateral leg weakness is seen. Uh, power uh, is four by five in right lower limb and four by five in left lower limb. And on rectal examination, yeah, large nodular prostate is felt. Hard large nodular prostate is felt. All the basic investigations were done, and tumor markers like CEP, AFP, CA1, uh, PSA, or uh, prostate-specific antigen are given. Uh, positive findings like PSA was found to be uh, 45.0 uh, nanogram per ml. The normal range is less than or equal to 4 nanogram per ml. The testosterone levels are elevated. USG showed hypoechoic lesion in peripheral zone, and uh, so. USG guided biopsy was done, which led to 
diagnosis of adenocarcinoma of the prostate. Uh, we advised MRI of the spine with spine screening. Here in the left side, we can see normal MRI of the spine. In our patient, we can see a lesion in the spine. This is an oncological emergency which requires prompt, uh, very prompt diagnosis and treatment and to try and prevent catastrophic consequences of paralysis and incontinence. In patients uh, with suspected malignant spinal cord compression, urgent magnetic resonance imaging of the entire spine should be done within 24 hours of presentation. The sensitivity is around 93 to 100% and specificity is around 90, 90 to 97%. In patients uh, who are contraindicated for uh, MRI, CT myelogram is recommended. It has comparable sensitivity and specificity for specificity to MRI. The treatment approach include uh, uh, multimodal uh, therapy, uh, uh, which includes uh, medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, palliative care specialists, rehabilitative medicine specialists, specialty nurses, dietitians, psych psychologists, uh, physio uh, physiotherapists. Uh, first, uh, before going into the treatment, we have to decide whether uh, uh, we have to grade uh, the involvement of the spine, which is done by epidural spinal cord compression score, which quantifies the extent of spinal cord compression. Axial T2 weighted images are used to assign the six point score. Grade zero, the tumor is confined to the bone. Grade 1A, the tumor with epidural extension without displacement of thecal sac. Grade 1B is tumor displacing the thecal sac without spinal cord abutment. And grade 1C is deformation of thecal sac with spinal cord abutment but without cord compression. Grade 2, there will be spinal cord compression with clear CSF visible around the cord and grade 3 is circumferential epidural extension that causes severe spinal cord compression with obliteration of CSF space. The general management include uh, in uh, grade 0, 1A, 1B, 1C is conservative management and 2C and 2 and 3 grade is surgery. In our patient, we can see a lesion in the spinal cord. It is uh, the grade is on, uh, 1A and 1B, uh, we cannot see it, see it clearly, but still uh, it comes around, uh, it comes into the grade of 1A or 1B. This uh, PPT shows the initial assessment algorithm, uh, global performance status. Uh, we will assess the uh, patient's uh, uh, general condition and we will uh, uh, decide whether the patient goes into surgery or radiotherapy. Uh, KPS is Karnowski's performance status. Poor, uh, KPS, which is less than or equal to 40 or life expectancy less than or equal to two months, we will consider best supportive care or conventional external beam radiotherapy. If the patient has a fair to excellent uh, Karnowski's performance scale greater than 40 uh, or life expectancy greater than two months, we will design the uh, systemic disease burden, which is extensive or not. Like uh, if, if the disease, uh, if the systemic burden of the disease is extensive, and the disease is un uncontrolled and progressive and no systemic therapies are available, we will consider best supportive care or conventional external beam radiotherapy. If the uh, disease, systemic disease burden is, expensive, uh, ex is uh, extensive and, uh, and the, uh, the systemic disease is well controlled and stable, effective systemic treatments are available, then we will uh, decide the progression with MNOP algorithm, which we will see in the next slide. If the disease, uh, systemic burden is mild or moderate, we will uh, consider uh, doing the same MNOP algorithm. For uh, right now, we'll come to our patient. Our patient has a KPS score of 80. So uh, the systemic disease burden is moderate and the disease is well controlled. So we are using the MNOP algorithm. Before going into the MNOP algorithm, spinal stability is more important. The spinal stability is decided by the spinal stability neoplastic score, which includes uh, different components like uh, location, pain, bone lesion type, spinal alignment, vertebral body collapse, and posterolateral involvement of spinal segment. If we score this, the maximum score will be 
18. Uh, if the score is 0 to 6, the spine is stable. And 7 to 12, the spine is potentially unstable. And 12 to 18, the spine is unstable. After deciding uh, the spine is stable or not, we'll go uh, into the MNOP algorithm. MNOP algorithm is mechanical, uh, which, which is expanded as mechanical stability of the spine, neurological involvement, oncological treatment, and preferred treatment. If the patient has an unstable spine, the straight away we will go into surgical options. If the patient has a stable spine, then we will decide whether uh, there is uh, whether uh, spine stable spine with mechanical pain is there only mechanical pain is there if that is a finding then we will go to steroids brace and vertebroplasty and uh, if the patient has a tumor confined to the bone or paraspinal uh, soft tissue we will decide the responsiveness to treatment uh, if if it has a favorable histology we will do conventional uh, external beam radiotherapy if it has an intermediate histology intermediate uh, responsiveness we will decide conventional external beam radiotherapy or stereotactic radio surgery if the if there is unfavorable responsiveness to treatment we will uh, stick with uh, stereotactic radio surgery if the tumor extends into the epidural space or spinal cord compression occurs uh, then also we will uh, check for responsiveness uh, to treatment if it is favorable we will uh, stick with uh, external beam radiotherapy and inter intermediate we will do conventional external limb radiotherapy or separation surgery can be done. If it is unstable, uh, unfavorable, there is only one option. We will do surgery and which is followed by stereotactic radio surgery. And now we are coming to our patient. Uh, our patient has a stable spine. The neurological deficit uh, is seen. Uh, the tumor is confined to the bone. The tumor is uh, the, the tumor has an intermediate uh, uh, responsiveness uh, histology. So we are going to stick with external beam radiotherapy or stereotactic radio surgery. The general treatment includes a definitive care and a, a symptomatic care. In definitive care, there will be a steroids and gastric protection, surgery, uh, which includes decompression and stabilization of the spine and radiotherapy. Symptomatic care includes analgesia, venous thromboembolism prophylaxis and management of urine and urine detention and constipation. Corticosteroids. Corticosteroids uh, must be promptly initiated as soon as malignant spinal cord compression is suspected. Dexamethasone causes uh, dexamethasone has pain relieving uh, pain relieving activity by reducing edema. It preserves the existing neurological function. Bridges uh, it acts as a bridge to definitive treatment. The dexamethasone is started uh, at a dose of sixteen milligram for day one to four. For every four days, it is uh, uh, it is uh, uh, reduced as per this uh, regimen. It is given for 20 days. Uh, the good pre prescribing practices of corticosteroid include documentation for corticosteroid, uh, indicating the length of corticosteroid, using profile axis like with proton pump inhibitors, ensuring appropriate information uh, uh, about the drug, and uh, monitor uh, on high dose steroid monitor for diabetes, dyspepsia, epigastric pain, mania, hypomania for patients who are on high dose steroids. For analgesia, the patient will be presenting with severe pain. So we will start uh, with steroidal or non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, neuropathic agents like gabapentin, pregabalin, opiates like morphine, and fentanyl pass and bisphosphonates. We will decide the uh, uh, drug based on the WHO analgesic ladder. Uh, we will also deal with the all the components of pain, like physical, psychological, social, and spiritual components of the pain, so that the pain will have appropriate, the patient will have appropriate analgesia. Anticoagulation. Cancer is a hypercoagulable state. Patient with malignant spinal cord compression are at especially increased risk of venous thromboembolism due to immobilization. So, subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin uh, can be given, uh, which can be combined with uh, compression devices also. One uh, other complication is uh, constipation. Uh, the factors which lead to constipation include autonomic dysfunction, limited mobility, opiate analgesic. Uh, the patient can be given prophylactically osmotic or a stimulant laxative. The surgical options, the decision to do surgery is dependent on many factors, including spinal stability, as I explained uh, previously, the degree of cord compression, neurological deficit, radio sensitivity, patient preference, and patient prognosis. 
This is the same spine instability neoplastic score that I explained previously. Our patient has a lesion in the T10, uh, and the score is one. And the, and the patient, our patient has pain, and the bone lesion is blastic. And the spinal alignment, uh, there is no, normal alignment of the spine, and the vertebral body collapse. Uh, no vertebral body collapse, greater than 50% involvement is seen. And another one, our patient has a score of six, uh, which implies a stable spine and a modified Boyer score, which is used for, to assess the survival. Our uh, Here we can see the different prognostic factors like uh, visceral metastasis, no lung uh, cancer, primary tumor, which, uh, which is from breast, kidney, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, and one solitary skeleton metastasis, which is given a score of one. Our patient has a score of three. So his overall median survival is 28.4 months. Management with surgery include decompressive surgeries, in, uh, which is done in spinal instability, high epidural spinal canal stenosis, uh, score grade two and three, and established radio resistant tumors. The primary surgical options include laminectomy, Corpectomy and separation surgeries. Radiotherapy indications the patients who do not meet the criteria for surgery can be uh, included in radiotherapy treatment. No radio sensitive tumor with no spinal instability and no bony impingement of spinal cord. These are the uh, different uh, tumors. Uh, the high, highly radio sensitive tumors include uh, lymphoma, myeloma, Ewing sarcoma, and seminoma. Radi uh, more moderately radio sensitive tumors from breast, uh, prostate, small cell uh, lung cancer, ovary seminoma, and radio resistant tumors, uh, which include tumors from kidney, thyroid, non small cell uh, lung carcinoma, hepatocellular, colon, melanoma, and sarcoma, external beam radiotherapy, and stereotactic uh, radio surgery, generally delivered as a fraction therapy, example, uh, 25 gray in 5 daily fraction. And a patient with poor prognosis and established paraplegia and in severe pain, they can be given a single fraction of eight gray uh, for analgesia. Since our patient had a stable spine and a radio sensitive tumor, the patient was sent to radiation oncology department for management. And, uh, we kept monitoring the patient constantly uh, for uh, uh, palliative symptoms. Other consideration in the patient include bed rest versus mobilization. Uh, the patient have to be given a uh, proper rehabilitation, braces and collars. Uh, psychological issues uh, should be managed and nutrition should be managed. For uh, physiotherapy, uh, the patient in the, if the patient has a lesion, uh, the, the acute management includes a prophylactic ch chest care, prophylactic exercises should be uh, uh, given to the uh, patient and fitting collars and braces should also be given, which includes cervical collar, like Philadelphia collar, uh, Cerno occipital mandibular immobilization device, which is a SOMI device, and uh, lumbar support like Taylor braces. Since our patient has a uh, lesion in the lumbar area, uh, uh, lumbar uh, region, we will go with Taylor base. In rehabilitation, uh, we will uh, help, help the patient with safe discharge, safe transport, uh, appropriate lifting and the manual handling equipment uh, should be given to the patient and a special mattress and cushions should be given to the patient and wheelchair for mobility of the patient. Uh, the patient's attendance should be uh, specifically uh, explained about the measures to prevent pressure ulcers and psychosocial concerns, which include the patient, uh, the patient will be worrying about uh, reduced mobility, limitation of social life, increased burden on caregivers, uncertainty about functional recovery and overall prognosis, loss of jobs, financial concerns, and worry about future of the family. Principal management depends upon coping family and caregiving needs and advanced care planning. Rehabilitation program should be uh, designed with a multidisciplinary team of physical therapists they help in uh, help the patient progression from bed to uh, from bed to and uh, ambulation. Occupational therapists assist in improving the patient's independence in their uh, daily activities. Uh, we also should uh, take the help of rehabilitation nurses, social workers, and uh, psychosocial and palliative teams. After discharge from the 
uh, hospital patients should continue to receive rehabilitation services at home uh, nursing facilities should be uh, also should also be given to the uh, patient post rt uh, when the, 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 the when the patient came to palliative medicine opd the following management will be done the patient will be given pain management as per uh, who analgesic bladder bowel and bladder care will be given the patient uh, the nutrition advice will be given and a patient will be uh, sent, uh, sent for rehabilitation physiotherapy and occupational therapy these are the take home messages on suspecting malignant uh, spinal cord compression if we are suspecting malignant spinal cord compression uh, straight away uh, we will start uh, corticosteroids immediately uh, give analgesics according to who pain ladder uh, bowel and bladder management if needed if the patient is fit for surgery then send the patient for surgery if the patient is not fit for surgery and uh, then radiotherapy opinion is taken and uh, if they, uh, start the patient on uh, heparin unless it is contraindicated follow multidisciplinary team approach take opinion from physiotherapist for signs stabilization and occupational therapist opinion also and, and also take uh, opinion from nutritional uh, uh, specialist thank you it was really good kesho it such it was such an, a good overview ashwin do you want to summarize and take up the questions yeah so um, ma'am we picked this patient up on a home care visit where we were told that uh, uh, such and such patient we can't hear you ashwin we can't hear you ashwin sunai nahi de raha ashwin sunai nahi de raha we cannot hear you ma'am Can you so call Kesho? We can't hear her. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma call her, ma'am. Meanwhile, anyone has any questions to Kesho? हेलो मैम हेलो वी कैन हियर यू नाउ वी कैन हियर यू हेलो हेलो वी कैन हियर यू हेलो रेडियोथेरेपी डिपार्टमेंट वी प्लान टू गेट इम बैक आई थिंक रेडिएशन आर लेफ्ट मोर सो but this was a very good case because it was a first time that we got a case with all such features in which the i mean it was a good learning experience this case was a very good learning experience especially for the residents because this was the first time they actually saw a proper malignant spinal cord compression case with and we worked him up really like this what uh, kesha has presented so but we are open to any questions if there are any uh, we'll be happy to answer them so there is one question ashwin from dr meenakshi from adr uh, they are also starting now dnb can you say a few points on practically managing constipation in malignant spinal cord compression 
और ये मैम द क्वेश्चन इज कॉन्स्टिपेशन एंड मैलेग्न स्पाइनल कॉर्ड कंप्रेशन यस प्रैक्टिकल पॉइंट्स सो प्रैक्टिकल पॉइंट्स वन फर्स्ट प्रैक्टिकल पॉइंट इज दैट वी शुड बी काउंसिल द पेशेंट सच दैट इट डजेंट हैपन आई मीन द अदर कॉजेस फॉर एग्जांपल इमोबिलिटी और द न्यूट्रिशनल एडवाइस व्हिच दे शुड बी गिवन दे शुड बी टेकन केयर ऑफ बट वी ऑल नो दैट दीस पेशेंट्स विल Usually need opioids, and these patients are usually bedridden. Especially if the patient is has undergone surgery, <clears throat> the patients are bedridden. So prophylaxis about constipation or thinking that the patient will go into constipation, and managing it accordingly is the most important practical aspect that we can. So that we should try to, we should be able to think about it and then start treatment from the beginning only. so that about uh, because eventually they will have constipation whether it is because of the cord compression because of the drugs because of immobility because of surgery because of less nutritional intake or whatever <clears throat> so foreseeing constipation and advising and treating accordingly is of prime importance yes absolutely right so uh, uh, anyone else wants to ask anything reena रेजिडेंट्स बहुत सारे रेजिडेंट्स ज्वाइन कर रखा है रेजिडेंट्स हेलो डॉक्टर सुषमा प्लीज गो हेड या थैंक यू फॉर अ वेरी लॉजिकल केस डॉक्टर रीना Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Mm. Uh, 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 thank you for a very logical presentation and for especially highlighting the clinical evaluation and how you applied it. Uh, with respect to uh, uh, two points, I wanted to make. One was with respect to constipation uh, in spinal cord compression. One has to especially be very careful about um, regularly assessing the rectum. you know whether the anal sphincter is lax whether it is tight uh, whether the patient needs disinfection suppositories in 2003 a professor of rehab had actually written a very nice algorithm in the indian journal of palliative care uh, in fact actually i think we should digitize the older issues and make those available as well currently i think only from 2009 is available on the website and dr twycross had taken some material from this and put it in um, i think symptom management in advanced cancer so the rectal examination um, and rectal measures are particularly important in cord compression the second point is that in the indian context even lung cancer patients though it's not the most radio sensitive of tumors many of them have poor prognosis many have multiple metastases so quite a large proportion are actually likely to be suitable for radiotherapy and the third point is also to uh, along with the cord compression as you already mentioned to look at whether there are multiple sites of metastases whether there is some other visceral metastasis which needs early therapy and therefore it may be easier to give one week of radiotherapy than surgery and all of that so um, yeah those were just three points that struck me yeah thank you ma'am and it would be very nice if that uh, algorithm you are talking about regarding <laughs> constipation can be shared in the group so it would be a good learning for all of us also Yes, I'll scan and share that with you. And actually, Dr. Sushma, I think if these older issues could also be digitized and linked on the journal website, you know, there are articles by Dr. Twycross, uh, Jan Sternsward, people like that. Uh, Dr. Sandy McCadden had done one on subcute, uh, you know, the legal permissions for the subcute route. Uh, then it would be available online to people. We'll try for this, Doctor Rina. We'll do this. No problem. Doctor Stanley, you, Doctor Stanley, you want to go? You wanted to comment, Doctor Stanley? Uh, yeah, uh, just to support what uh, Doctor Rina has said, uh, the, the level of the lesion is important because 
either the it will work as a upper motor neuron lesion or a lower motor neuron lesion in in other words the uh, during clinical examination the rectal tone is very important if the rectal tone is lost and you continue with laxatives usually you have a very uh, bad nursing problem of incontinence you know the stool is soft and these people have no rectal sensation and also uh, the, it goes on leaking, you know. So the management then would be to allow them to become constipated and then use suppository or enema and also manual evacuation, you know, usually maybe alternately, uh, it's like unplugging. Uh, and again, the important thing in all this spinal cord thing is high level of suspicion because by the time you come to bowel and bladder problems, it's already too late. So high level of suspicion and immediate uh, you know, emergency measures to be put in. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stanley. Anyone else wants to thank you very much for all practical uh, aspects? Uh, uh, Ma'am Jennifer here. Yes, Dr. Jennifer, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, I think thank you very much for the presentation and many key important points have been uh, discussed. I want to just point out the importance of communication. Communication, uh, both as uh, talking to the patient about the red flag symptoms. So you know there are patients who have multiple uh, vertebral metastases who are coming to you for pain management. It is important to... Uh, teach the patient and relatives about uh, the red flag symptoms, you know, because uh, the important thing is early identification and management of cord compression is something that will uh, impact on uh, ambulation, the quality of life and the uh, residual effects of the cord compression. So uh, pointing out the red flag signs and symptoms for them to look out to and immediately come if they had any of those is important. And also in those who have developed a cord compression, again, uh, the prognostic factors that will affect ambulation. What is the what is the pre-ambulation uh, status? What is the neurological status? The Whether it is a chemosensitive, radiosensitive thing and how early or late they have presented to you with cord compression. All this will affect their uh, neurological status and... Um, uh, for many, this is a very difficult thing because somehow they want to walk, they want to get back to what they were. And uh, so prognosticating and communicating after that is also important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer. Thank you very much. Anyone wants to have any other practical tips for the students? Or share your experience? So, uh, Dr. Minakshi, the important pressure ulcers prevention of immobile. Dr. Minakshi, can you open your mic and say all these so that everyone can hear? Good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm just wanting to, uh, I mean, because the residents are there, I just want to say that uh, the importance of pressure ulcer uh, prevention and management uh, cannot be overemphasized in these patients because... I mean, frequently, you know, physiotherapy and the role of position uh, change is, uh, you know, uh, not uh, not uh, emphasized upon in the, uh, you know, in a busy ward. People are so overwhelmed with the corticosteroid and the radiotherapy, they completely forget the physiotherapy aspect of it. I mean, beyond the brace, we have to teach the patients and their family uh, when they take the patient home, they need to uh, continue doing uh, position changes every two hours, uh, protect the pressure points. Because uh, if the patient is going to remain bed bound even after therapy, this uh, this uh, maneuvers need to continue till uh, end of life. So that's the point I want to make. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. So I think all senior people have given their most important practical comments, and uh, uh, I just want to say one thing that Keshav, it was an excellent overview based on one patient you have narrated and explained everything in detail. And thank you, Ashwin. Uh, this was such an excellent uh, overview of spinal cord compression. And uh, 
uh, with the, your presentation and comments from Dr. Reena, Dr. Stanley, Dr. Jennifer and Meenakshi. It, it has become a complete package to learn for under his, for PGs, uh, what exactly they should be doing in spinal cord compression. I just want to say that spinal cord compression is a, is a significant, you will get a lot of patients of spinal cord compression if you will be, you have a high level of suspicion in your assessment. So any patient uh, of spine, of uh, CA uh, lung, uh, CA prostate, CA breast, they are coming with backache. Uh, just and uh, you think that uh, already they are on second line th chemotherapy. Sometimes they will present straight away with the spinal cord compression, and your uh, prompt management and uh, prompt management and uh, care uh, or knowledge. First, your knowledge and prompt management will prevent a major disaster in their life. It can prevent a major disaster in, in their life because once the uh, bowel bladder problem will set in they uh, and once they will become paralyzed or once the time will the precious time will uh, we will lose precious time then we will not be able to do reverse we won't be able to reverse anything so it is important and you should have a very good uh, very good co coordination amongst the team is very important uh, there is a excellent role of radiotherapist and then medical oncologist can can have a a role in their this thing so everyone is important in managing spinal cord compression straight away if it is coming in palliative medicine please take help from everyone and if they are calling you for spin managing spinal cord compression you should be there and give your prompt management and you can prevent a lot of unnecessary uh, very disastrous thing in patient's life if you are very prompt first you have to improve your knowledge and then management skills. And uh, thank you very much. I think it was an excellent overview by Keshav and I'm really impressed, Keshav, the way you have presented. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, Ashwin, thank you very much uh, for moderating it so well. And uh, and I think mentoring Keshav, I was little this thing. I wanted to know that how SMS Medical College is doing, but uh, by listening first, uh, your first MD students, I think, we are very happy to hear him that he's understanding the concept of multidisciplinary pain team approach and uh, uh, everything. I think he has understood the palliative care concept. So thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for, for joining. Uh, we'll see you next week, Monday before 6.30. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Reena, Dr. Jennifer, Dr. Stanley, Manakshi, and uh, Archana and Nisha again. Thanks a lot. See you next week. Bye-bye.